Good morning and a very warm welcome to morning prayer on Friday the 2nd of September. I have been away on an extended break and it has been a time of joy, time of renewal and restoration, but I am delighted to be back with you again this morning. This is the day when the church remembers the martyrs of Papua New Guinea. And there are some names here that I feel that we should mention by name. The church in Papua New Guinea was enriched by martyrdom twice in the 20th century. James Chalmers, Oliver Tompkins, and some others were sent to New Guinea by the London Missionary Society and were martyred in 1901. During the Second World War, New Guinea was occupied by the Japanese army and 333 Christians of all denominations died for their faith. Among them were priests Henry Holland, Joan, John Duffill and Vivian Redlich, who remained with their people after the invasion of 1942. Evangelists Leslie Gariadi, Lucien Tapiedi and John Barge, May Heyman, a nurse, and teachers Margaret Brenchley, Lilla Lashman and Mavis Parkinson. Also remembered is Bernard Moore, a priest in New Britain. We think of those who were prepared to die for their faith, and we give thanks for their service, for their faith, and for their martyrdom. In Jesus' name, amen. as we prepare to spend the next 20 minutes or so in each other's company, worshipping, giving thanks, and thinking about our wonderful, loving God. We begin with the words, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We have two psalms this morning. The first is Psalm 88, and it is a psalm of lament. It is a psalm of people who are struggling, who are desperately seeking God's help. If that is you at this time. I pray that this psalm will encourage you. You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. O Lord, God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before you. Let my prayer come into your presence. Incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles. My life draws near to the land of death. I am counted as one gone down to the pit. I am like one that has no strength, lost among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have laid me in the lowest pit, in a place of darkness in the abyss. Your anger lies heavy upon me, and you have afflicted me with all your waves. You put my friends far from me and made me to be abhorred by them. I am so fast in prison that I cannot get free. My eyes fail from all my trouble. Lord, I have called daily upon you. 
I have stretched out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades stand up and praise you? Shall your loving kindness be declared in the grave, your faithfulness in the land of destruction? Shall your wonders be known in the dark or your righteous deeds in the land where all is forgotten? But as for me, O Lord, I will cry to you. Early in the morning, my prayer shall come before you. Lord, why have you rejected my soul? Why have you hidden your face from me? I have been wretched and at the point of death from my youth. I suffer your terrors and am no more seen. Your wrath sweeps over me. Your horrors are come to destroy me. All day long they come about me like water. They close me in on every side. Lover and friend have you put far from me and hid my companions out of my sight. You are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. In the depths of our isolation, we cry to you, Lord God. Give light in our darkness and bring us out of the prison of our despair. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our second psalm is Psalm 95, and it offers us a reminder of the way to praise God, to rejoice in God's love, whether we are feeling it at this point or not. Come, let us worship and bow down. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, let us worship and bow down. Lord God, the maker of all, as we bow down in praise this day, make us attentive to your voice and do not test us beyond our enduring. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. In the first of our readings today, uh, from the Old Testament, we have a reading from 2 Samuel, chapter 7. And it is the story of King David talking to God and acknowledging how small he is in the sight of his Lord. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me thus far? And yet this was a small thing in your eyes, O Lord God. You have spoken also of your servant's house for a great while to come. May this be instruction for the people, O Lord God. And what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. Because of your promise and according to your own heart, you have wrought all this greatness so that your servant may know it. Therefore, you are great, O Lord God, for there is no one like you and there is no God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Who is like your people, like Israel? Is there another nation on earth whose God went to redeem it as a people? and to make a name for himself, doing great and awesome things for them. 
by driving out before his people, nations and their gods. And you established your people Israel for yourself to be your people forever. And you, O Lord, became their God. And now, O Lord God, as for the word that you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, confirm it forever. Do as you have promised. Thus your name will be magnified forever in the saying, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel. And the house of your servant David will be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, have made this revelation to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found courage to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this good thing to your servant. Now, therefore, may it please you to bless the house of your servant, so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken, and with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A song of the word of the Lord. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Beautiful words from Isaiah. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy to our God, who will richly pardon. Our second reading is from the New Testament, and it's from the book of Acts, chapter 7. It's the story of the martyrdom of Stephen and of the first appearance of the young Saul before he became Paul. When the council heard Stephen's words, they became enraged and ground their teeth at him. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. And Saul approved of their killing him. That day a severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria. 
devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house, dragging off both men and women, he committed them to prison. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. A song of praise from Revelation. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, O Lord, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God. You are worthy of our praise for ever. Come now to our time of intercessory prayer. We begin this morning by giving thanks, Heavenly Father, beloved Lord Jesus, blessed Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift of this new day, for all the possibilities, all the opportunities and interactions that lie ahead of us. We pray that you will bless us, that we might be a blessing to others. Bless our hands at every task we undertake. We pray for our young people, for our preschool, our primary, our secondary and our tertiary students. We pray especially for all those who are starting school today, a new term, a new academic year, For those who are beginning at a new school, for their anxieties, bless them as they find their way, as they make new friends, and give wisdom, compassion, and kindness to all our teachers as they begin a new year that they may nurture and nourish our children and our young people. That each one, each child, may fulfill the potential that you have given them. We pray for your world. Your world and every need, needs that are so great for the brokenness of worlds at war. For Russia and Ukraine, we pray that Russia will desist, that they will leave Ukraine and cease their aggression. We pray for the ongoing conflicts in Syria, in Yemen, in the Sudan. For the victims of the flooding in Pakistan.
for all whose lives have been turned upside down by war or natural disaster for every person who now finds themselves homeless. We pray, Lord, for your help, for your intervention. That you bring peace to our world. We pray for our church, for everyone who serves you in ministry, lay and ordained, for our church wardens, for our Blackwater Benefits, for Tracy, our vicar, for the ministry team, for the church up and down the land and across the world, for everyone who calls on your name, Lord. Resource us, give us vision and hope. Help us to be your eyes, your hands, your mouth, your heart, that others may see you in us and we see you in them. We pray for all who are suffering at this time in any way, physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual suffering, Lord. We pray for your comfort and your healing. We lift up to you those known especially to us at this time. And we draw all our prayers together in the prayer that you yourself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for today. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And on this beautiful day, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning. I wish you a joyous and happy weekend. Goodbye.